Canada's business community, or at least parts of it, appear to be breathing a sigh of relief today after Canada, the U.S. and Mexico reached a deal to preserve NAFTA. Thirteen months of talks created a lot of economic uncertainty, and investors see that as a do-not-enter sign at Canada's doorstep. But the new trade deal won't just affect businesses. Consumers will also see an impact, and the CBC's senior business correspondent Peter Armstrong joins us from Toronto now to explain some of that. Hey, Peter, nice to see you. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate Hi, it. So now that uh, U.S. farmers will have more access to the dairy market, poultry market, does that mean, this is the big question I had this morning, you know, will chicken be cheaper? Will, will anything be cheaper for me at the store? Well, I wouldn't start sort of counting on where you're going to spend all these newfound <laughs> savings. Listen, it means more choice, and it will inevitably, eventually bring prices down. But we're talking, what, 3.6%? And it's going to be implemented over a 20-year period. So this is going to be a long, slow roll. Uh, so it's not going to sort of dump money into the coffers of the nation where all of a sudden people are going to be spending all their milk money that they, they had elsewhere. But as I say, it does add choice, and it does open up the market, which is something that consumer advocates, retail advocates have been calling for for a, an awfully long time here. What about the changes at the at the border that could affect cross-border shoppers? Well, th th this one's really interesting and it, it's it's there's an interesting point in all of this that, you know, the, the de minimis rules is what they're called. These are the, the duty-free rules. They break down into, into two main things. You have the duty-free rules, which is what everybody concentrates on, but you also have the uh, this provincial sales taxes, right? So up until now, the current rules are that both of those have a threshold of $20. So you couldn't bring in anything more than 20 bucks. You'd have to pay both duty and provincial sales taxes. Now we're booting that up all the way to 150 bucks, but the sales tax, is kicking in still at 40 bucks. Uh, so, you know, duties are like 2%, whereas taxes are up to 15%. We have a graph here. Let's take a look at this. If you bought, say, $150 worth of stuff, something just below the threshold, $149, say, in Atlantic Canada, you'd still be paying $22.35 in taxes. Uh, in Ontario, you'd be paying... Uh, what's Ontario, $19.37, and in BC, it's $17.88. So the, it, the, it's kind of clear that I think a lot of people thought that this was, well, all of a sudden I can just shoot across the border. It's not across the border. It's only digital. And they thought, well, I could just buy whatever I want and pour it back into the country. The, the duty is actually quite small. It's only 2%. It's those sales taxes that still kick in, and we've moved that threshold. So it's an interesting sort of when you put all of that consumer stuff together, it gets to an interesting point where you sort of think the politics and the economics of all of this really begin to diverge in an interesting way. That in a lot of ways, the stuff that's difficult politically, the, you know, how are we going to manage this relationship with the farmers and how are we going to sort of come up with a compensation package for them that's going to work? And, you know, that's good for consumers. It's not sort of a political headache for consumers that are just looking to buy cheaper milk. And then you look at like the copyright laws and you look at the, the patent extensions. Uh, those are great for protecting things, but they're probably going to mean that generic drugs are going to go up in price. So that one not necessarily is good for the consumer. Can I ask you before I let you go about the greater question of certainty and uncertainty and a lot of, you know, the political discussion revolved around that over the last 13 months. Does this deal, be it good, be it bad, however it's characterized, does having a deal create the certainty that appear to be lacking? It, it, it's a double-barreled answer, if you'll forgive me. I, I spoke a lot last night with Brett House, the deputy chief economist at Scotiabank, about this exact thing, that, yes, it takes some of that uncertainty, a lot of that uncertainty off the table. What impact is that actually going to have on the economy, though, is really up for some debate. I mean, we've seen a lot of those companies we thought they would be delaying their investment, but they haven't been. Uh, and, and what's going to happen now, they've sort of been using labor to get their way out of productivity problems. They're up against that now because the economy has been doing so well. Uh, it, it's a broader conversation for sure, but it, it's not necessarily exactly what you might think uh, in terms of, like, I, I went into this thinking, well, this is going to solve the uncertainty problem. You're going to see a massive increase in CapEx, in, in capital spending by these companies. And Brett was saying, well, it's not necessarily the case that they have been spending, and we're not going to see the, the floodgates open all of a sudden just as a result of this uncertainty going away. Interesting. Okay, thanks a lot, Peter. Really appreciate it. Peter Armstrong in Toronto.